Teresa welcome to my channel thank you for joining me here today today I'm going to be taking a look at this product that I have on the table here and this is a set of gouache paints by the brand Artex I'm, I'm going to guess I'm saying that right A -R -R -T -X. not really sure how else um, to pronounce that and full disclaimer here, Artex got in touch with me, asked if I would be interested in trying this product um, as I had reviewed some of their watercolour paints previously. And I said, yeah, I'd really be interested to try. I've tried gouache paints once before. I have um, a set of Arteza gouache paints. And although they're not the easiest paints to use, they're something that I kind of want to persevere with. I very much like the effect that you get from using them. So I was interested to see how these perform, how they maybe compare to, to the um, experience that I've had previously with other brands. And, and really just, just to have a play around. Um, when they got in touch with me, I wasn't aware of what the paints look like or anything. I just said, yeah, um, and then they sent this set to me. And as you can see, this is the box that they came in, um, a bit like a pizza box style box. Really nice, I like this artwork on the front. Um, it's sort of got a, a glazed effect on the picture of this sort of cute little um, spaceman type um, character. And this here, which is almost like a little UFO shining down. This is a representation of the paint that is inside. It also says jumpstart your imagination muscles and begin your new artistic journey. Um, and it says on here that there are nine gouache paints inside. So we're going to open up and have a look what we've got. So there is a little card that says uh, art is a light that never dims. Thank you. We would love to see you sharing our products using the following hashtag on social media. And that is hashtag RTX, again, A -R -R -T -X. And if there's any questions or concerns, please contact us at any time. And that's their customer service. And again, all the sort of uh, social media links there on the card. There is a little um, postcard in here with the same artwork that's on the cover of the box. And here is a little sort of printed swatch chart. And it does say on there that the colour chip is only for reference. Um, so, uh, you know, please make your own swatch with the paints if you want a better representation. But it does give you some information on here, um, which is really nice. You get the uh, names and numbers of the pigments that are in the paints and it also gives you an indication of whether they are opaque or half opaque which is really quite useful. So as you can see we have nine pots of paint here and again the colours and pigment numbers are all on there for your reference and we have light yellow, we have white, bright red, we have two blues which are Prussian blue and ultramarine We've got violet, black, burnt umber and grass green. So a fairly basic set here. We've got the primary colours. We've got a black and we've got white. Um, I don't know whether I'm, I'm impressed that there's two blues or not. Maybe we, we would have been more used with an orange in there perhaps or another green rather than the second blue. But it will be interesting to see what the difference between the Prussian blue and the ultramarine is. I'm going to use these two create a finished artwork rather than just sort of swatching them out. Um, I may make myself a little swatch chart at the beginning, but I, I figured the easiest way to see how they perform is to actually just create an artwork. And while I was deciding what to do, I was thinking, what can I document? Um, I've recently, it's just, it's just past Christmas, obviously, and I bought a 12 Days of Christmas advent from um, a, a local handmade um, crafter. I don't really know what else to say. There's a lovely lady. She has um, an Etsy shop and it was a collaboration between her and her sister who also makes handmade um, items. Also the Harry Potter theme. So I've got 12 little Harry Potter themed gifts that I'd got and I thought that might be a nice subject matter. I will pop a link um, to their um, social media in the, in the description below if you're interested in taking a look at what they make. But um, I, I just thought it might be a, a nice subject matter, something nice for me to draw and then paint. But we'll just take a closer little look at these pots before we go any further. As you can see, it's a metal pot. This is a transparent lid, so you can see the paint. This is actually the paint that I can see through it. Um, and it has a wide opening 
like so. So that's quite nice to be able to get at the paint. I mean, if the previous gouache that I've used has been in a tube, so you've had to squirt some out. Once you've got it out, you can't get it back in the tube. However, if you let it dry on a pallet, you can reconstitute it with water. I'd be interested to see whether this is more convenient to be able to work out of a pot like this, or indeed, does that mean that your paint's going to dry up quicker? I found that with Dilutions paints in the original format. They were in a wide mouth um, pot, but we'll see. It's quite nice. Might be nice just to scoop some out and then I have the option of scooping any leftovers back into the pot again afterwards. So I've, I've got these pots here. I've got myself a palette so that I can mix some colours. Just to see, it's quite a basic colour palette. Um, not a lot of sort of convenience colours or anything in there. So I shall be using a palette to mix some colours. I've got a selection of paintbrushes and then I've got drawing materials and I've got my sketchbook. So I'm just going to move the paint out of the way um, to begin with because I do need to get my line work down in my book to start with. And I shall probably just go to a voiceover at this point and sort of speed through the process and um, explain what I'm doing as I'm going. So I've got out my sketchbook, my journal here, which is an eight inch square journal. And I'm going to begin by sketching all the items. This first one here is a little felt Professor Quirrell. Really like him. Um, he's a hanging decoration, as is this um, Hogwarts padded heart with all the different house fabric on there, showing all the different symbols of the different houses. It's really, really uh, a, a fun item. This little um, one here, this is a pin. This is a dirigible plum pin. And next up, we've got the monster book of monsters, this furry decoration here with the two big eyes. We've got Luna's Spectre Specs here. That's made out of felt and there's some metallic thread embroidery going on that. And next up is a velvet stocking. This is Hagrid's stocking. It's got a furry top and two big fangs on it. Um, just rubbing out there where I'm overlapping my images. Next up is this hand-painted sorting hat. It's like a display prop, really cool. It's got glitter on it. And this here is a little jar of ice potion. Really like this. Whatever's in there, it's like a liquid. It's got crystals, gems, glitter, um, some like iridescent film and stuff in there. Very, very nice. We have a Hermione in her Yule Ball outfit here, a little wooden peg doll hand-painted, and a hand-knitted Mrs. Weasley Harry Potter jumper. Really like that with the H embroidered on the front there. And in here, this little box here, there's some wax melts. Um, these have got um, lightning bolts and glow-in-the-dark wax. And it's the draft of living death, apparently, is the scent. But it smells really, really nice. Here is a crocheted headless Nick ghost. Really like him. He's on a little wooden base. And I'm going to start painting. Obviously, I have to mix some colours here. So I've mixed a little of the red and the yellow and the white to create this flesh tone, just lightening it up a little bit. Um, gouache sometimes, depending on the colour, it either dries lighter or darker. It's quite difficult to predict sometimes. Um, but obviously, with this being a limited palette, I'm having to mix some colours, having to mix a lilac here for his turban. Uh, but the coverage is really good and it's mixing quite easily, to be fair. And it is just down to a little bit of practice. You know, with some preparation, you could mix up some colour swatches in advance so you could work out what sort of colour proportions that you want. So obviously, again, mixing up another colour here. Um, just a bit out of shot, unfortunately, but it, it, I can't really get all of the palette and the paints and my journal in as well. Um, but mixing up, trying to get this sort of bright pink that uh, Luna's Spectre specs are. Quite a difficult colour to try and um, mix, but um, when, I, when I first put it down on the paper, I was a little bit unsure how it was going to look, but when it's dried, I quite like it. It, it, it looks all right, and I think it's about as good as I'm going to get trying to mix this sort of hot pink um, myself. So as you can see where I paint, I've sort of go around the outside first, then filling in. You want a consistency. Um, you don't want it too thick because you want the paint to spread. But obviously, if you water it down too much, it loses some of its opacity. So that, that can be a tricky thing with gouache, trying to get the colour um, consistency just right. Again, trial and error, plenty of practice, and you sort of get there eventually. Mixing the blue again, it's quite a bright turquoise blue on the... Uh, felt decoration and again can't quite get that vibrancy but the two colours that I do get end up working really quite well together and I'm very happy with the way that it turns out especially when it's dried. 
So next we're moving on to that padded heart that has all the symbols of the Hogwarts houses on. I liked this, really enjoy painting this because it's nice bright colours and as you can see I'm doing it in sections, doing all the yellow first, trying to avoid having to wash my brush out too many times. Obviously every time you wash your brush you want to dry it off, make sure it's clean, dry, you don't want too much water mixing in with the paint again otherwise it will affect the consistency. It dries really quickly which is nice which means I can kind of move on from one section to the next quite easily. Uh, you will see me sort of dot about a little bit later if I'm using a colour and I can use that colour elsewhere I will try and sort of do that again to avoid washing the brush too many times. But the fact that the paint dries quickly um, is, is nice, you're not waiting around too much. Um, sometimes with watercolour you, you, know, you have to go away and come back again or work on completely different sections. But this gouache is really nice. I also like the fact it dries with a nice matte finish, which is really good if you want to go on it, over it with some pens or something as I do towards the end of this. So as you can see I've done the Gryffindor, I've done the Slytherin section, I'm just doing the Ravenclaw here with the birds and the yellow sections they just need some black on the badger for the Hufflepuff house. It'll look a little bit uh, more like a proper heart once I've lined it um, at the end of the video but for now I, I hope you can see that it's turned out really quite well. Just doing Professor Quirrell's eyes there while I've got some black paint and just drawing in his mouth as well. I'm really sort of now mixing a little bit off camera again, just again can't get it all quite in shot. This is the Monster Book of Monsters. It's, it's a, a, quite a deep pile fur fabric. So I'm putting down a base tone of this sort of mid uh, brown. I've sort of made a little greyish, slightly greyish tone with some white in there and adding the teeth that are along one edge. I'm going to add in some different layers of colour later to try and bring out that furry texture. I thought I'd make his eyes a real nice, sort of quite bright orange. They're not quite that bright in real life, but it, uh, it helps them stand out on the page a little bit better. So as you see, again, no problem going from one colour to another. It's drying really quite quickly. So going back now onto the glasses and adding in the details that were sort of embroidered on the original. So there was some um, like sort of stars embroidered in the centre of the lenses and then there was some little metallic highlights all over the pink and again just pointing in um, where the stitches is the stitches are on those glasses and you can see quite a good coverage there on the yellow over the blue next to the dirigible plum pin this is like a brooch um, really nice it's made out of a fabric that's been painted and it's got little beaded leaves in reality um, really like it, it's quite cute. Moving on to the second page now, this is day two actually, as you can see that uh, the outfit I'm wearing has changed. Um, day one, I spent about an hour or so painting and the, the second page here again, about another hour. This here is the crocheted nearly headless Nick. Quite a difficult thing to try and uh, make him look anything other than just this little grey blob unfortunately. The I do add a little detail in later just to highlight the fact that he is crocheted. I didn't want to be over fussy with it and try and mark out every single stitch but wanted to put a bit of detail in just so that you could sort of see that he he's not just a flat plain grey shape. So just letting that dry a little bit and I'd got a bit of flesh colour still in the palette so I did what will be Hermione's face and then I'm moving on to the sorting hat which is the largest thing really that's on this page giving that a base colour of brown and then I'm going to go and add some highlights with a slightly lighter colour and shadows with a darker colour. And as you can see it's it's working really well, the colours are not muddying, I'm lay, able to layer light and dark colours and, and really pleased with the way its coverage um, is working. These are the wax melts here, I decided not to draw the box that they were in um, but wanted to put the wax melts in. They Oh, like I say, purple and a black mixture of colours in the wax. There's little silver um, confetti thunderbolts in there, um, which I do paint in. And then I will actually go over to, at the end with a, a metallic gel pen to highlight. Moving on to Hagrid's Christmas stocking. Again, a fur fabric top, so trying to add a little texture with some different colours, um, different shades of grey there. And then painting in this really dark brown velvet Going a little bit out of frame here, I do apologise for that. I thought I was still in the, in the frame as I was painting this, but to go slightly off to the side. Not trying to keep it a completely flat colour because it is velvet and velvet catches the light quite well. So sort of patching a couple of colours together there in that um, stocking. 
Next up is Harry's jumper, the, the Mrs Weasley hand-knitted jumper. And again, not being too fussed um, about trying to pick up every detail of the, the knitted stitches and that, getting a good base of blue down to begin. Then I've moved on to the ice potion. While I've got a bit of the blue left, mixing some white, mixing in little bits of grey as well. Again, slightly out of frame here. I do apologise for that. But again, getting a bit of a base colour, adding some highlights, adding some shadows, building up um, the layers, which is a really nice thing that you can do with gouache. As long as you're not overworking it, um, it does layer really quite well. Gone to that nice sort of creamy beige colour for the parchment effect label. And I'll add details to that later with a pen. Moving back up here to the um, Hermione peg doll in her lovely pink dress that she wore to the Yule Ball. So again, putting a base coat, a bit of a shadow down one side and adding the details of the two frills on there. Going back to Nearly Headless Nick and adding in the red around his neck. Um, putting his little eyes on, which give him a bit of character at this point. Same with Hermione, while I've got the black paint um, going over and just adding the details there onto her face. You'll see that a bit better in the close-ups at the end. Putting a little bit of blush onto her cheeks as well, and then painting in her hair in the dark brown colour. Trying to keep my hand out of the way as I'm doing it. I look a little bit awkward holding the paintbrush, but I'm trying not to block the camera view too much with the, with the way I'm holding the, the paintbrush. So we go back to the jumper and I wanted to try and add some stitching effects. So when I put that H on the front, I've done it in like little V shapes. So it looks like um, it's it's knitted in there. And then using a pail of blue, just added in a little of the rib detail around the, the neck and the cuffs and the bottom of the jumper. Here I'm adding in those thunderbolts on the wax melts. And while I've got this lighter grey, just adding a little detail to the crocheted nearly headless neck. The sort of the fluffy bit around him, that uh, was felting wool to create the illusion of smoke because after all he is a ghost. So again here mixing more colours and I've gone a little bit uh, off camera here. I was adding the detail onto the monster book of monsters on the left hand side. Just adding some light and dark flecks just to make him look a little bit more furry. And as I say, unfortunately, just slightly out of frame there while I was doing that. But, you know, it's uh, adding in the details on the stocking. And now I've decided to line everything with a black pen. This is a, a brush pen. And just like, I like the fact it gives me a slightly, it's got a slightly flexible tip. So I get a slight variation in width. But I just wanted to sort of give it a bolder effect and lining everything in this black just really just helps all these things uh, pop and pull together quite well. Here you can see the detail that I'd added onto that monster book of monsters there just by uh, adding in light and darker colours. I also added a few white highlights onto its eyes because they are shiny toy eyes. So again here, lining around all the fur, lining around this jumper, which is really cute. And going to add in some more details onto this jar of ice potion. Drawing in the little owl that was on the label and uh, drawing in the name on there. And again, just lining in this uh, peg doll just brings out those details a little bit better. Same with everything really, adds a little bit more dimension. It makes the wax melts look a little more like the the blocks of chocolate, that's sort of the best effect that I can say um, for that. And again, just detailing in on that crochet. And here's my finished journal spread. I finished it off by just adding in some titles for what each of the items were. Um, I've written 12 Days of Magical Advent and added some little stars using a gel pen. I mean, as you can see, I'd outlined everything with my pen and again, using um, a gold and a silver gel pen, I added just a few little metallic highlights here and there just to brighten it up. But I'm really pleased with these paints. Um, the coverage is absolutely brilliant. Um, gouache paints are supposed to be um, opaque or semi-opaque and these really do stand up to that. They were really quite good with layering as well layering both some lighter colours and some darker colours on top really well. Um, they worked well, they didn't reactivate too easily, which can be a problem. Um, so very, very happy with those. And for the price of like 14 
for these nine paints. If you want to try out gouache, I think it's a really good sort of value for money starter set. Um, the quality is, is really good, good value for money there. Obviously, with it being a limited palette, you have to mix your own colours. Uh, and if you're not used to mixing um, sort of custom convenience colours, that can be a little bit tricky to get the hang of, um, especially with gouache, where sometimes it dries a little lighter or darker than it is when it's wet. So sort of trying to figure out that can be a bit tricky if you're not used to mixing paint. But I worked it, you know, really well. I'm quite happy um, with, with the, the mixed colours that I created there. I'm just really happy with this nice little spread to commemorate the Advent set that I bought. So, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Do check out the links below if you're interested in either purchasing these um, paints or if you're interested even in having a look at what um, the lovely ladies at Wanden Hook and Women's Glowing Curious make as well. So, all I need to do is wish you all a very happy new year and I shall see you again soon. Bye!